Hello guys, welcome back. I know it's been a wee while since I last did a video, but I thought I'd better get back into the swing of things. I've just been kind of a going through the motions a wee bit recently, so I thought we're nearly at the end of the season, so why don't we do my SPFL or Scottish Premiership, if you would rather, team of the season. Uh, a wee rule before we get into this one, I'm only allowed to pick one player for Rangers and one player for Celtic, just because I think it would be too easy because of how dominant Rangers have been for me to sit and go. That player, that player, that player, that player. So which Rangers player will make it in to the 11 and who will miss out? Let's get into it. We start with the goalkeeper and a lot of you must be thinking Alan McGregor, surely he's a shoe in. No, for me, I've went for Benjamin Segrist from Dundee United. He's got the third most clean sheets in the league this season and he's got the most saves out of any goalkeeper in the league as well with 131 saves uh, throughout the season I just think as well he's good. He's a big strong goalkeeper can come for crosses, good kick on him and an excellent shot stopper and if you think Dundee United still in the bottom 6 this season but he's kept the third most, most clean sheets and saved the most shots so where would they be if it wasn't for him so he definitely makes it into my team as the goalkeeper. We now move on to the right back and um, you're obviously thinking to yourself James Tavernier has missed assists, missed goals for Rangers. He's not made it either because I think I need to get this guy in the squad. I think he's been an absolute revelation. It's, it's St Johnston's it's Sean Rooney. I just think he's really good going back and going forward. There's a lot of people talking about whether he should be in the Scotland squad or not. For me Yes, I would have him in the Scotland squad. Um, I think that he showed in the Scottish Cup game against Rangers that he can keep a Borna Barisic quiet, who is somebody that we'll come up against at the Euros. And I think throughout the whole season, he's just had an impressive campaign. He's been in a team that have won the, the Scottish League Cup and are still in the Scottish Cup as well. So, uh, he's had a really good season. And even though I'm a Motherwell fan, and I know Stephen O'Donnell's did okay in the Scotland shirt, I would still... Have him there at the Euros, I think he's a great, great player. So Sean Rooney in it right back for me. Before we move on to the centre half, so I should just state that my formation is a 4-4-2 with a diamond in the middle, so a narrow diamond. So we're not playing with any wingers when we get to midfield, bear that in mind. But we move on to the centre halves, and this is where my Rangers player comes in. I've went for Connor Goldson. Now I know that a lot of you might have been thinking McGregor surely is hitting 40 and he's been brilliant this season, I'm not disputing that, as has Tavernier, I mentioned that earlier. But, I could think of someone else other than McGregor that I could put in and someone else other than Tavernier that I could put in. When I think of the centre-halves throughout the week, I couldn't think of another centre-half. Maybe Josh Kerr at St Johnson, but Conor Goldson for me has been the most improved player of the Rangers this season. I think in recent seasons when you looked at Conor Goldson, you would think, oh, he's got a mistake or two in him. Uh, but no, this season he's played virtually every game. I think he's made 54 appearances this season. He scored eight goals, and as I say, he just looks really, really has looked really, really solid throughout the whole season. Uh, you think of the clean sheet record the Rangers had at the start of the campaign. I think it was the first. It must have been the first. 10 and 11 games, it might be more by the way, I've just popped that figure out the top of my head that they kept a clean sheet in and I don't remember apart from the games against Celtic many games where McGregor's pulled off brilliant saves um, so, but I think Conor goldson has been the one player who's just been that rock at the back for Rangers the whole season so he goes in in my centre back position Conor Goulson beside him this might surprise a few because he is a guy that came in for criticism in recent seasons. He's a guy that people would think has always got a mistake in him. But, well, he's still young and yeah, he's a bit raw, but I just love him. I think he's big, he's strong. He likes to play for the back as well. I went with Ryan Portis at um, centre-back. As I say, he's only young. He's still going to improve. He has attracted interest from Millwall. In January, I think he will spend maybe another season at Hibs and then move on. I think that would be the best thing for him to do because he's come on to a game this season, whereas last season he was a wee bit shaky. But overall, I think he's been solid this season. 
And I think if he builds on that next season, then he'll get his big move away for him. So Ryan Portis in at centre back beside Connor Goulton. We move on to the left back position and I've went for another Hibs player. Just because of how impressive he's been in his first full season uh, at left back for them at Josh Doig. He's still only 18 years of age. I know that he's chipped in with I think it is three or four goal, goal involvements this season and you might be thinking a left back should maybe be looking to get a wee bit more. But let's remember he's only 18. He used to be a centre back and he's just been converted into that position. I think he's brilliant defensively. He's shown that he can be athletic going forward and I know we're really strong at left back but he's going to be someone in the future that's going to push for the, for the Scotland place and I think he, he will find himself in that squad. Not this season, um, too early for him and as you know we're already got a plethora of players at left back that are just world class in Tierney Robertson so he'll know about the Euros but definitely one for the future, Josh Doig in at left back. Now as I said, I'm going with the diamond in the middle of the park, a narrow diamond, so it's technically four centre mid with one sitting, two right and left and then someone in behind the striker. And centre defensive mid, it's my first multiple player in the team, Alan Campbell. Without him, we would be good this season. Um, he's, I think he's one on one duels, with his bat when he won the ball, he's won 73% of those. Um, and, and without that, with how shaky we were at the start of the season at the back, I don't know where we would be, we'd probably be <laughs> relegated to be honest. Uh, and he's managed to chip in with, with four goals as well. And that's not Alan Campbell's game. A lot of people this season, I've seen some people think, oh Alan Campbell can get a goal, can this and that. But he's far, far better defensively than he has gone forward. I'm not saying he's bad going forward, just defensively is where his strengths lie. And that's shown and I'm winning 73% of his duels this season and he's someone that unfortunately I think that we're going to lose in the summer um, I can't begrudge him that, he's made over 150 appearances for the club now um, he's been there for ages, he's won the Youth Cup before they get into the, the first team as well so he definitely deserves for his career to go to the next stage I just hope that it's someone down in England because obviously we don't want to lose Always in our Scottish club because as we've seen with David Turnbull it can be quite difficult watching a player that used to be your own um, do well for another club but no, Alan Campbell definitely in at centre defensive mid for me. My right centre mid, uh, this might surprise a lot of people because I know he scored a lot of penalties this season but I just think he's a he's an all round good player for this club and uh, somebody that if they were without um, they, they would not be the same team and I've went for Lewis Ferguson at Aberdeen as I say he scored a lot of penalties but he's still 15 goal contributions so that's goals and assists to the team over the course of the season um, he's someone that I think could play at the Premier League uh, or definitely at the top level of the Championship uh, we know he's, he's Barry Ferguson's nephew, the comparisons there, but I think for him to make that step into the Scotland squad, kind of a similar way Alan Campbell, because of how strong we are in the midfield, he has to go down to England and prove himself, whether that will be the next season or the season after, who knows, but he's someone that is still in his early 20s, 22 I think he is, and um, He's getting bags and bags of potential, so I'm, I'm really interested to see how his career is going to develop. Lewis Ferguson in at right centre mid. Now, left centre mid is somebody who, I, I, I'm going to be honest, I've never really even heard of before the start of the season, even though he joined St Mirren at the beginning of last year, January 2020. I've went with Jamie McGrath. He arrived for Dundalk, as I said at the beginning of last year, and he's just shown that he's an absolute handful for teams this season. He's got a goal, he's got an assist, he's got a wee bit of pace about him as well. 16 goals in all competitions for the team with St Mirren is, is fantastic. Um, and obviously he's been attracting interest from the likes of Aberdeen. I think that would be, especially if Aberdeen were to lose, Lewis Ferguson, I think that's your replacement right then. I think they should go out and get Jamie McGrath 
from St Mirren, he's been, he's been brilliant this season, so he's in at left centre mid, his centre attack mid, I don't think it comes as a surprise to many, he's David Turnbull, he's been absolutely sensational for a poor, poor Celtic side this season, he's shown he can use both feet, get his first goal in Europe eh, for the club as well. And uh, I just think he's brilliant. If he's not in the Scotland squad for the Euros, even though how strong we are, for me it's a travesty. I think he offers you something different. He's a better player than Ryan Christie for me. I think he's shown that this season. And I just cannot wait to see where this guy's going to go. I get a bit of stick for saying this, but I genuinely, genuinely believe it. He will go right to the highest level of the game. He'll go to England and I can easily see him playing for an Arsenal or somebody like that one day. Um, I think he will spend a few seasons at Celtic and, and let's not forget this is a guy who had a year out of the game he's come back this season and he's just looked the same player like, if Celtic never tried to sign him when they did and they failed that medical Tumble's career could have been over because if he got an impact on where the injury was then that was him basically done so it's a good job at Celtic trying to sign him even though I'm a Motherwell fan because for I think for Scotland and for us as a country moving forward that, that would have been a, a big big blow it was a player of that potential early on uh, in his career so I David Turnbull uh, been involved in loads of goals loads of assists definitely Celtic's standout player of the season and he's in at centre attack but now my two up front I think the first one picks itself at I know a lot of you might think, why did you only go for, for one feature for them? I just think it would have been really easy to pick some players and stick them in. I wanted to make the video a wee bit interesting for you guys to watch in terms of who he's going to pick. But I don't think you will be surprised by this next selection. I've went for Kevin Nesbitt. Kevin Nesbitt, um, his first season at Hibs this season and he's been absolutely on fire. He's scored... I think it's 14 goals in the league, that's only 3 less than odds on Edward. Just think of him being at a club like him, he's not getting the same service that Edward would be uh, getting at Celtic. He had a period in January when there was all that stuff about the move to Birmingham, where they had a period where Jack Ross just played him on the bench. So I think if, he never, if they never had that wee fallout, then he definitely would be top goal scorer in the league. He's someone that we've got to take to the Euros. Um, and I think that Hibs made a mistake not cashing in because I don't know if they're going to get more than three million for them in the summer. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see what happens there. But someone that really, really excites me. He's got pace. He's a natural finisher. And I just think he's fantastic. Kevin Nisbet and a uh, right striker. And then move on to my second striker. Now this is going to divide a lot of opinion. And I know he's a going to say you're just putting them in because he, he plays for the team you support. I, I did think about McNulty, I did think about the boy Malame at St Johnston, um, but I've went with Devante Cole, and the reason that I've went with Devante Cole is because if it wasn't for his goals, then we're basically in the championship next season. He's managed to get double figures for the Motherwell side, who were absolutely atrocious in the first half of the season, and he's... Part of the reason that he's done so well is the arrival of Graham Alexander. Since Graham Alexander's come in, we are the third most form, informed team in the league. And he's been a huge part of that. He's been scoring goals near enough every other week, I think, about his goal against Rangers. He even showed it the weekend, scored a great goal and grabbed a tremendous assist. So he's someone that I hope that we can keep on to uh, next season. You might have seen in my video if you go and watch it. I done a video on the Motherwell rebuild and he was someone that I said won't be there next season. I really, really have changed my mind on this because in the second half of the season he's been he's been brilliant and he's someone that we need to keep a hold of. Now, every team needs a manager. Uh, and I think of the managers in the league. Who's it going to be? Obviously Graham Alexander's done brilliant for you come in at Motherwell, but I don't think I can give it to him. Steven Gerrard's been amazing, unbeaten uh, this season with, with a really strong Rangers side. So he was a close second. He was a close second, he was. But I'm going to go for Callum Davidson. You think of the way that people were talking 
about St Johnson at the start of the season. Everybody had them tipped for the drop. Everybody was like, oh, they're definitely getting relegated. And they've been brilliant. They've managed to get into the top six. They've won the League Cup and they're still in the Scottish Cup. And, and to think that Callum Davidson could surpass what Tommy Wright did his whole time at St Johnston in one season is, is miraculous really because this was meant to be a transitional period for the club but he's had none of it, he's really got them playing some good stuff as well and he's got he's got them winning games and hard to beat so why Callum Davidson is the manager for the 11? Now I know he's going to be annoyed that maybe certain players have missed out Edward Tuckle scored in the week did he put him in? Tavernier or McGregor as well. Maybe even Ryan Kent, he thought, should be in there. Or Manella, so he's a Rangers fan. But I didn't want to sit here and pick Rangers player, Rangers player, Celtic player, Rangers player. Because it, it would just have been a boring, boring video, I think, to watch. So I tried to freshen it up a wee bit and I hope you've enjoyed it. And apologies for the lack of content over the, the last few weeks, but we're hopefully starting to get back into the swing of things now. And I hope you've enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe as always if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye bye.